Hi, this is Pukachu with another Dreams Early Access tutorial, and I'm going to be showing two different ways of building a brick wall. One is made out of a bunch of sculpts that are all grouped together, and the other is a single sculpt module, and I'm going to show how to do those two things and how they affect the thermometer differently. So the simpler way that might be uh, easier for new creators, not necessarily the best way long term, but it is a good way to start out. I've already grouped this all into one uh, group. I'm going to ungroup it so that we can see that these are all different little independent objects. And so if I start deleting some of these, you can see they're all separate. These bricks are all clones of each other. The shorter end bricks have been modified, which makes them uh, unique from the rest of the clones. It's a pretty simple shape. It's, it's just a cube that I stamped down. I did use the grid switched on and uh, in my uh, custom colors, I had this uh, brick red color that I used so basically what I did to make one of these bricks was just to stamp down the cube shape at its default, take the stretch tool, and uh, shrink it down a little bit. And there we have a brick shape. It doesn't leave a lot of room to show the, uh, the mortar cement in between. And so I then shrunk it a little bit and I did that just by taking the grid down really small and then using the stretch tool and taking each side down just a little bit. I won't go through all of those steps over again. It's a little bit tedious to watch. I do most of the work. If I'm on the grid, I usually try to stay at the basic number one grid and I go in and out from there as needed. So that slightly reduced brick then was just cloned repeatedly. So to make a row like this, just go from one side to the other and pressing the directional left button fills in extra spaces along that line and they're all automatically aligned to the grid. Then to get these shorter ones at the end, these were just another one of the same brick. Same thing, I just used the stretch tool adjusted the grid a little bit because the full grid snap wasn't doing it. I took it down to half size. So you can adjust the grid however you need to um, to resize things. And this works. It's, um, it's a very simple way of putting together a brick wall. And it does give you some nice flexibility in that you can open the tweak menu for any of these individual bricks and you could say that one should be a little bit lighter. And maybe, you know, this one, oops, that was the, uh, the background. Maybe that brick should be a little bit darker and you can do those kind of tweaks. But overall, I do find that for this kind of thing, it's better to sort of build a chunk of the brick wall just as one sculpture for the thermometer and also to keep your painting options open. So I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to save these changes right now. I'll go over to the other version here, which I remixed from the other one, um, mainly to save my custom color palette as the main reason that I chose to remix because I already had some nice brick colors that I liked. So to make this, um, if I select this, you can see it's not grouped. It's actually just one sculpture. All of this is, is one individual thing that I made in sculpt mode. So I'm going to scope into it here and I'll just uh, delete a few pieces out of here. It's actually very similar to building it in assembly mode. I did the same thing of starting with a basic cube shape and shrinking it down to a brick and then oops, do need to have the grid on for this kind of work. You can do the exact same type of cloning when you're scoped in, where you can grab it, clone it, and you can, uh, oops, I grabbed the wrong thing again. <laughs> you can grab the brick, 
clone it out and add a bunch of copies in between. <clears throat> and you can also uh, use the stretch tool to change these shapes. A couple of important things to take note of here. I'm just going to actually delete this piece of gray material that is the mortar and show how I did that. We've got these bricks here and I'm going to scope out and look at the texture a little bit. I'm pretty happy with the looseness of the texture on those bricks. There's one thing we could do to make them a little more brick-like, which is we can turn up the color amount on the inner color property, which is by default set to black. You can change that to something else, but I'm just going to crank this up a little bit. Oops. And it's not showing a whole lot. And because it's not showing much, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the sculpture detail just a little bit. This will save the thermometer and it'll also add some texture. I'm just going to take that down about two clicks. And now you see we have that kind of a rough look on the bricks where the inner color is showing through and kind of creating some texture. It's a very thermo-friendly way of getting texture on a surface. Scoping in, I'm just going to show how I made the mortar. I did all of this with the stamp shape rather than the smear. I don't use the smear shape very often. I use this neutral gray color and working on the grid. Now before I stamp this shape down and start stretching it, I'm going to open the shape editor. I'm going to turn on varying looseness and right away we see that that's making this new shape looser than the rest. I can tweak this up and down a little bit, but I think where it was is actually just fine. And that'll give us a little bit of a rougher look. Maybe I'll even bring it up a little bit more. I'm just going to stamp that down and then I'll use the stretch tool Oops. to make that larger. So it's pretty much covering the bricks right now. I'm going to turn off the grid so that I can just do a little bit freehand here. And I'm just going to stretch it down, shrink it just a little bit so that the bricks pop through. And you could play with the color of that and all sorts of things. I won't be too precise right now. So that's the basics of how I made this piece that's just one uh, sculpture instead of a lot of small pieces put together. And if we want to change it so that a few of these bricks are maybe a little bit out of place or we could grab a few and pull them forward a little bit so they're sticking out, maybe just twist some a couple degrees to one side or the other. If you wanted to make it look like a rough brick wall. If you want to change the color of these individual bricks, which would look more realistic, the downside of doing it this way is that you do have to go in and actually spray paint each brick individually. So we can take the spray paint tool and we can, you know, turn on the grid and get the right shape and everything. But it is a little more painstaking if you want to change these brick colors. I have some preset colors here that I came up with. You could go through and just change a few of the bricks doing that, but it is a little more laborious than the other way where you can actually just tweak the colors. But it also does allow you to do this spray painting effect then where you could uh, just take a bright color and go over the surface of it by having a little bit of a blend and change the opacity. Now suddenly you have a pretty cool spray paint function, which you can't do on the other version that's made out of a lot of chunks, because this is all something that's still happening while you're scoped in onto that. This is all happening while you're scoped in onto that sculpture. 
and uh, it's all still contained in that one thing. Uh, the thermometer doesn't get really heavily affected by that spray painting. And our original creation was 7% graphics, but this is now 2%, and that is because I hit that sculpture detail reduce a couple of times to bring out the texture in the bricks. It actually improved the look of the sculpture and it brought the graphics thermometer down quite a bit. We could do the same thing in the other version and it would also bring down the graphics. Come to dreamsworst.com for all your play, create, share needs and feel free to follow LB Pukachu on Twitter. Apparently you found me on YouTube, so that's good. And uh, we'll see you next time.